how many tools are needed to create a full-fledged track or at least a strong enough idea one three ten twenty i don't know honestly it doesn't really matter as long as the result is what we desire right so but what i believe matters is that creativity lacks some sort of limitation where there is a uh, time or resource or whatever it is right and i'm also sure you heard that uh, phrase saying of limitation enhances creativity right so my goal for this video was to use that phrase and limit myself to a handful of tools two to three for every category like sound triggers aka sequencers one for the drums and one for all other sounds sound generators aka synths like operator and reactor Number three, sound modifiers like effect, sound toys, crystallizer, and sugar bites looperator. That's what I came up with. And yeah, if you was wondering, well, what is this guy wearing here? Uh, I brought my little child here, my little baby. He's three months old right now and he's my assistant today. Uh, he doesn't really care. Sleeping. So yeah, let's dive in. Hey friends, Juan here from RuffinStudio.com. So this week I came up with a track idea where I was mainly using synths that can create rarity sets of sound right so for example the macro oscillator next for life device rulos and adaption from an euro rack module called mutable instrument plates right that i showed you in the last week's video if you haven't seen that uh, go back and watch it if you like then i have another set another sound generator which is uh, ableton stock synthesizer operator fm based uh, synth and then i have some effects like uh, crystallizer sound toys crystallizer and looperator from sugar bites and then i also have some sequencers like uh, an adaption of the alex kids instant house i guess it was yeah for triggering the sound and then i have also a sequencer called mdd snake which is an adaption from another your rack module called make noise rene right by the way a little note here i intended to do a screen recording a live jam session but uh, on some level i forgot to resume the recording you know i thought i can save some editing time and push that pause button and then i forgot to actually resume the recording right so uh, i maybe will do some uh, walkthrough uh, video here and some screen capturing and I hope it still inspires you so yeah let's dive into the actual Ableton session to see what uh, we can do and also a little note here about the mindset that I followed for this kind of track here my main idea was to use one main idea and then evolve that into something new right and then I simply copied that main idea to another channel or I simply duplicated it and then tweaked some knobs, added some effects to evolve that initial idea into something new, right? And with the mutable instruments, plates, aka rulers, this is really easy to do because we have a variety of sounds, right? So we can play chords with the same sequence, we can create basses, all with one simple tool and that's what what I was doing, right? So yeah, let's jump over to Ableton and uh, yeah, see what we can come up with. Okay, so let's let's have a quick listen here.
so yeah the main drums are here this is sequencer it's the minimal and inside there I have basically just different sounds for the kick um, clap and so on right and those are all operator based right now I saved that as a template and you can actually get it if you want it but um, you get the option only if you opt in for the soft but snappy kick by the way yes and then you get a little option there but just a little side note here I don't really want to promote stuff here on my free YouTube channel you know anyway um, and then what I did this one is interesting I guess so really I duplicated this main drum set here just duplicated right and then as you can see here I switched the pattern here so they have kind of a question and answer thing going on and I also um, adjusted the swing setting here we have swing 6 56 56 and 61 and then have a listen here right those are doing nothing I guess are they oh yeah they have they play something I guess just some fillers maybe you see <laughs> I don't even remember what I did here yes they play something okay I was also adjusting those those uh, patterns here right pattern 20 and here we have a different pattern right so basically we can switch in between patterns with this sequencer here it's really handy and really fast and then I adjusted the kick here right because this is FM based operator based I have a vibe setting here that switch the, the wave and the main one is I guess this one this one zero and if you change the waveform of this we get different vibes right and we can go crazy we can use the filter right if we want to can go crazy you can really adjust things and if you want to right so yeah that's really simple just duplicated the main drums and adjusted swing um, what else uh, swing uh, patterns basically and some audio from this operator right and then let's move further then I came up with I don't remember bro I guess the main thing that I came up with is this bass here. This is the bass sequence, right? Just use the string setting, but if I switch it to chord. little groovy bass going on and again we use this MD snake which is an adaption from the sequencer and make noise Rene
yeah and then i was duplicating this uh, kick here again into something new again and i don't remember what i was doing here but again another ripe thing i guess and i adjusted swing again right and i added a shitload of um, reverb and changed the pitch of course adjusted some toning things and those are basically just macros to this operator right Yeah, and here I have them dabbled around a little bit with this kick, right? I just as I was just putting on some um, crystallizer effects and loop rate right to make it a little bit more interesting and again this is all from from this main sequence just an adaption right with some effects on it some kind of a filler in the background and then I came eventually up with something I guess yeah this is a reactor jam Nothing really special. I actually thought it's nothing usable, or you know. But it does its job inside the track as a filler kind of sound. So yeah, this this main theme here is basically made with uh, rulers and the chord setting, right? I don't remember the specific uh, settings here, but I recorded it quickly to audio and I was just uh, live recording it, right? Just... Uh, sequencing it with the same sequencer. And then again, I copied this sequence over to come up with this uh, bass here. I have a huge mess here. This here. Basically just a simple layer, as you can hear, right? Just with this different string mode, right? And some effects on it. Yeah, and that's the whole concept. It was basically just duplicating, adjusting a little bit, tweaking a little bit. And uh, yeah, that's it really. Uh, let's have a quick listen to the other audio stuff that I came up with. Yeah, this is another filler from that came out from the string bass here. Again, a simple duplicate on it and then change the, the speed here, right?
you can hear it's exactly the same like the bass line right but if we just use a different speed and maybe we could also adjust the playback direction and so on to create a little bit of filler sound now and then right and then crystallizer again looperator as effect and i used a different um, oscillator mode here i guess it's called maybe i don't know and just fiddling experimenting with different parameters right Not 100% sure anymore about some uh, stuff here, but yeah, just to show you the the main uh, concept here that I was using for this track. Um, yeah, hope ins it inspires you in some shape or form. And really, again, it's just the main thing is coming up with something that you like, sort of. Maybe is 70% up to your current skill set and then um, duplicate it and then adjusting it you know that something new comes out of it with the mindset of evolving it into something new it's simple somehow and i really personally i like really like that track especially this rulers chord thing i uh, it's so simple to be honest
Okay, let's sum it up quickly. As you can see, we really don't need a whole lot of tools to create uh, music, right? In fact, sometimes it's even better to strip it down to a handful of tools and then using the fundamental ideas and evolving them into something new. So they still are connected somehow, but sound different, right? It's almost like, like a net, you know? Like a spider, you know? Like a spider net. Is that a, a word in English? I guess so. So it's connected with each other, but it still has some space, some holes, some difference in between, right? But it's still connected. It's tight, tied together, and it works beautifully with each other, right? So yeah, now it's your turn. How can you limit yourself to enhance your creativity a little bit and challenge yourself in the studio? Is it by timing? Is it by tools, by resources? Again, just think about those three main categories that I mentioned in the beginning, like sound generators, sound triggers and sound modifier, modifiers. My recommendation is choose one to three tools for every category and then go from there. Maybe just use one category. I don't know if this works, but maybe yes. Just limit yourself somehow and see what you can, can come up with. It's a beautiful experiment, I guess. Fucking flies. I think it's a beautiful experiment and it will, it will certainly help you to think different, to think a little bit harder and uh, bring your new ideas and skill sets. So yeah, I hope this was helpful. Thanks again for watching. Thanks for your time, it means a lot. And also, the last couple of weeks, a lot of people texted and sent me really great feedback. I'm really grateful for that. And I'm really grateful for your time for watching this. You could honestly do something else, right? You could watch Netflix, whatever it is, going out to the sun, riding the bike. I don't know what else. We can do a whole lot of shit, right? But you're sitting here and watching me, listening to me. That means a whole lot of shit to me. Thanks again. Cheers.